Okay guys, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you the latest episode of my FIFA 21 West Ham career mode. Last episode we won two matches and lost another, all in the league, so we haven't really progressed too much, but at least our form is somewhat picking up. And as you can see on the screen, we've been talking about selling Hilaire, and we've actually got a big offer from Arsenal for 41.9 million. And I'm actually a bit scared because the thing is, is I can apparently be asking between um, 36 and 53, um, but I don't want them to storm out because this offer is definitely way too good to be true. We could definitely do some business with that. I'm thinking of doing what um, the comments said and actually signing someone like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who might not necessarily start over Antonio straight away, but would definitely be one for the future. So I am going to accept this deal, but I am going to try and negotiate a bit. I think I'm going to ask for 45 because I don't want them to storm out. So, um, yeah, let's see how that goes. Okay, negotiating with Arsenal. They want 40 one million. I actually just want to see like um, what players they've actually got. I don't know. If think they'd swap anyone. They've got Enketia, who actually probably would be a decent signing. To be fair, but I'm not too sure about doing that. Calvert Lewin was a comment in the last video, but um, I wonder what winners they've got as well. They've got Nicolas Pepe. That could actually be an interesting swap if they do that. But I don't know how realistic that is. They have Martinelli as well at left wing. That is. Very interesting. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, to be honest, I do think that we could potentially do a swap, but I think I just want to take the money because the swap seems to never be really of value. So um, that was nice to look, but I mean, someone did actually comment for me to get Leno, which um, I guess we actually could do. His value is 41 million, so I guess maybe you could do a straight swap there, but he is 28. I think I'd actually maybe want a younger goalkeeper anyway. Who knows if he'd actually come to us. Would be a great goalkeeper though anyway. But I want to focus more on the goalkeeper when um it comes to it when Fabianski actually leaves. So um yeah I think that I'm just going to ask for a new transfer fee. I think I'm actually gonna to go to fifty million. I don't think they'll accept it but hopefully they don't storm out. Um we'll see what happens, what they do with that. They don't want to see it full through and they'll pay 50 million. Arsenal paying 50 million for a guy that doesn't even start for us. That is absolutely mental. What have I just witnessed? Oh my god, I have no clue. 50 million. I know I'm selling him to Arsenal, but at the end of the day, we're not competing with Arsenal this season anyway, and God knows if he's going to even properly start for them. I mean, he might do. He might come back to bite us, but I mean, he's wanted to go. I don't really necessarily like him that much in this game. He hasn't really performed that well for West Ham in real life. So I think 50 million for Arsenal, that's an absolute steal. And um, we can definitely, after he's sold, go after someone like Yarmolenko. But our next game is against Man City in the Cup. I'm not too sure if he's going to actually get sold before that. If he is, then we can maybe make the offer. We'll have a look at what our emails say. Um, Halle has actually been sold. We've got an international management offer from Slovenia. Don't care about that. 43 million. Very good indeed. Player chat. I know that eventually you're going to be looking for a new left winger, but I think I can do a job for you in that position if you give me a chance. That is actually a good point. I was talking about signing Boga, but to be fair, Erzi is someone that can fill in on the wings, um, which I do think is fair enough. I might actually start him against Man City too be honest, I'm not sure, you're the man for the job, this is your chance, I'll say this is your chance to him, he's very happy anyway, I think his squad role is only rotation, so he should be fine no matter what happens, but either way, if we go and look at our transfer budget, we do have 51 million in the bank, which is just, that's a big difference from when we had nothing, and we probably can change that a bit, I oh, don't want to go too far, 120k, um, no, we'll change that a bit, we'll go to there, so yeah, 52 million, pretty insane. I think I'm actually going to go and offer for Calvert Lewin. So we do need a striker now. Um, he is apparently valued. He could be valued quite highly, but um, 
we'll see what happens. This is a comment that someone had, so I am going to approach to buy Dominic Calvert-Lewin from Everton. I think, I'm not sure how good Everton are doing. They might be below us in the table, I'm not too sure. They were sort of around that area. We are going to be on, um, negotiating with Ancelotti. It doesn't really look like him at all. I don't think there's a player that we can really include in the deal, to be honest. Strikers, who do we have? We have that guy, they're not going to want him. Centre-backs, Diop, Balbuena, Kouassi, Alessi. I'm just going to have a little scan, guys, see who there is. I don't think there's anyone they're really going to want. Goalkeepers, they won't want. Um, wingers, who are the wingers we have? We have Erzi. We have Bowen, to be fair. Bowen never really gets played, but we do need that cover on the wing. So I'm not going to look to get rid of him yet. Completely forgot about Bowen. I think his potential is decent as well, so I'd rather keep him. I want to offer the transfer fee. Um, they did say to maybe 37, but I'm going to offer 30 million at the start. That is higher than his value and um, is a decent offer. So we'll say 30 million. See what they say. They want, they want Felipe Anderson and 19 million. Hmm, that is interesting. I don't know if I want to be necessarily giving them a player, but we could therefore sign another winger. Or we have Erzy, and we could sign another winger like Boga or someone. So that actually could be all right because if I do just sell, if I do just buy Calvert Lewin with the money, there's a good chance that I won't have money to do anything else. So that is very interesting. Um, do I accept it? How much would that be? That would be costing about, wait, 19 million plus him. So that would be about 45 million in value. Um, what if I counter, propose a new transfer fee, and I try and bump it down to 16 million plus Anderson? See what they say to that. There you go. They'll take that offer. Okay, that's that's interesting. That's also that's that's fine. And um, we have to negotiate his deal. But um, just like that, Calvert-Lewin would be a player, and Anderson would be gone, which means that I'll have to start early against Manchester City because he won't have a winger. But um, that's fine. I'm glad that we've actually managed to do that. He wants to be a crucial first team player. Could I get away with important? See what he says. No, they want to be crucial. You know what, that's fine. I'll accept that. He probably will start over Antonio anyway in a lot of games. You can at least rotate them and try them out. So, and that's not too bad. Five years. He's 23. So, five years, please. He will accept that. That is good. This could be a very good deal, guys. We weren't looking to include a release clause. That is fine. I do want to know what his wages. He wants 40,000. Oh, my God. That is... Crazy. The goals bonus, though, is weird. I want to take away that, so he might bump it up. That's absolutely fine. 47k, you know what? That is absolutely fine. We'll take that. That signing bonus was nothing as well. And just like that, guys, we actually have Calvert-Lewin. Um, and Boga is someone that I could look to get as well. We could actually try and look to get him before the Man City game. If we look at our squad now, Bowen's in the first team. I'm going to remove him from that. We're also going to put Calvert-Lewin, who's not in good form, apparently. I think it's his, yeah, sharpness. He's unhappy. Is he unhappy that he's joined us? He should surely be, like, happy now. I'm assuming he wasn't very happy with Everton. I don't think he was actually getting started by them, so that deal's not too bad. But do let me know what you guys actually thought of that deal I just made. Maybe some of you will hate it, but um, I think that it's actually not that bad at all. We'll start him on the bench, though. Because obviously his sharpness isn't great. He can get a run out though against Manchester City. This is how the team looks. I think I am going to try and get someone like Boga. However, it could be interesting for the fact that I don't know yet how much he is. However, getting him before this game against City could be pretty crucial. If we go to our office, we do have 35 million in the bank. We could actually probably get a bit better there. We have 30. 8 million in the bank actually where I want to get that a bit higher the wage budget so that is fine um, I'm trying to think of what other players we have if we go to the transfer hub we um, do have players like this he's on loan Ampadu was just someone that I was looking at Tonali I did think he might have had a year left on his contract but he apparently doesn't which is a shame 
Hudson Adoy, value only 11 million. That's very interesting. However, going for Hudson Adoy seems to be something that's maybe a bit unrealistic, if you guys know what I mean. So, and also, I don't just want to be signing all these Chelsea players. I've got Loftus Cheek, I've got Gilmore. You know, I don't want this to turn into just me signing players from Chelsea for West Ham. Um, even though I would love someone like Hudson Doyle, maybe we can sign him like in a later career mode or you know later on in this one. But I think Boga is someone that I do want. He is left mid but can play left wing. So I think I'm actually going to make an offer for him. So uh, yeah, let's see how that is going to work. Right, this is interesting. I didn't realise that Sassuolo actually changed um, their badge, by the way. It's actually very old school, so fair play for that. Um, I do think... Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not even sure what he'd be rated. I know he's in the 70s, so if we go for... Uh, I don't want them to storm out. If I go for 16 million and just see what they say... They want 28 million. Okay, well, at least they've actually offered us um, a price for him. Um, I tell you what, I'd be fine taking this um, if he proposed a new transfer fee. I'm going to ask for 25 million. See what they say about that. 27.2. Do I just accept it? Because I remember that one time that I tried to bump down um, the 200k and they just stormed out. So um, I've got the money to. We'd have 10 million left to maybe try and do something else. Um, yeah, you know what, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to bring Boga back to the Premier League um, and um, see what um, Chelsea were missing out on when we did let him go to Sassuolo. So um, I think I'm going to just accept that. We'll take Boga for that price. He's going to grow into a good player anyway. So it um, should be a good deal. We're going to negotiate his weekly wage and see how good he is. I kind of feel bad a bit for Bowen. If you guys want me to actually play Bowen more, do say, as I know that obviously there are West Ham fans watching this career mode, so, um, you know, I do want to know. He wants to be important, I'll accept that, that is absolutely fine. He wants four years, can I counter to five years, would you accept that? Yep, they are fine with that length of contract, they don't want to release scores, they're just telling me what I want to hear, this is fine. Am um, I going to have to do the wage? Nope, they're going to tell me, so that is great. I'm going to remove the appearance bonus, because... It annoys me, which probably means that they're going to bump up the wage. 26 and a half, that's absolutely fine. Not going to phase me at all. And just like that, guys, you've actually made two signings. We've gone from um, making no signings to two signings. Um, and yeah, I'm sort of wondering what it is that we can now do if we go into the team. Boga's not going to start the first game, so don't worry about that. However, I believe he's rated 78. He's on poor form as well. So that's not great. He's um, just unhappy. So is that just what happens when you sign players? I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, I am just going to put him on the bench for now, which does mean that Bowen is unfortunately missing out here. We are trimming down the squad quite a bit, though, so that's at least something. I'm going to have to check my transfer list and see if these players are on there because I don't know what these players are doing. They're all not sharp and stuff. Maybe that's why no one's buying them. But... Um, yeah, good signing for Boga. We, that's all we're going to do before this cup match against Manchester City. And we might have a look and see what other business we can do afterwards. So yeah, let's see how we get on in this game, which is going to prove to probably be very difficult. Cup game against Manchester City next. I am actually using pretty much my strongest team, however Cresswell and Urzi have come in as Masuaki's fitness was not great. And we have obviously sold Felipe Anderson in that Calvert-Lewin deal. Um... Also, I did just realise, actually, we have Manchester City again after this game in the league. So, it should be interesting. Hopefully, we can pick up a win at least one of them. But like I said, our objective is to get Europa League football. So, this is why I'm playing such a strong team. Because this is pretty much our only chance of getting that. So, um, I do think that we do really need to try and win this game. How likely that is, I'm not too sure. But Manchester City's team, De Bruyne, Jesus, Sterling, all starting. Diaz as well. Ruben Diaz. I wonder if that actually got put into the game or if um, they actually just signed him in this career mode. They might have actually just signed him in this career mode, to be honest, because I'm not sure they signed him before um, I started this career mode. So that's interesting if that's the case. Um, Dumfries they've got as well, so very interesting team. Hopefully we can pick up the win against this very strong City side.
and get through. Erzi now tries to pass that away. He gets dispossessed. Not great on his performance to be doing that. But Cresswell manages to get the ball away. And now Declan Rice is running through. Through to Erzi. Yep, erzi has got the ball. He's going to run down the wing with his pace. Antonio has got ahead of his man. Antonio! Oh, man. No, that's not good. Antonio cannot be doing that. I don't know if he's feeling the pressure of our new signing, Calvert-Lewin, making his way into the team. But that was a very poor header. He needed to do better there. don't know if the cross was maybe just a little bit too late. But, um, yeah, that was not great from Mikel Antonio there. <coughs> City getting a bit let off there, in my opinion. Can Rice win that header? He can. And we are doing what I said. We are doing quite well in the air. Loftus shoot though, through to Ismail Assar, which is very decent indeed. Over to Antonio. Antonio buries it into the left corner. And that is not what I expected to happen at all. I was actually trying to cross that wide to um, Erzy, but um, it actually fell to Antonio. Fabianski now. City going to try and apply some pressure. That was decent. Off the cheeks making a run. I think he's just offside. That was maybe a bit too late. Actually, he's not offside. He's actually going to shoot. And he just misses. That was not great from... Loftus Cheek, he needed to really be burying that there. We cannot be throwing away opportunities like that against Manchester City. Jesus now, over to Ali. Ali with the nice little pass there. De Bruyne, De Bruyne is through. He gets that, but it goes in the back of the net, and that's really frustrating. Just a computer, guys. It just, yeah, they maintain possession. He's going to get in <laughs> the camera. That's actually quite a funny celebration, to be fair. But De Bruyne, their captain, does equalise the score. And um, yeah, I tried to make the tackle there, as you saw, but just kept possession and shot near post anyway. A bit of an issue from this game, but hey, we need to just try and take our opportunities more. And um, hopefully, it's not game over just yet. That is half-time, one all. Probably better than I expected to be, actually. But um, like I said, this is a crucial game to win. It is against one of the best teams in the country. So um, let's see what happens in the second half. And maybe, just maybe, we can see a miracle happen. Diaz, I believe that is, actually has the ball in the corner. Um, don't know what he's going to try and do with it, to be honest. He does pass it in. Fredrik still needs to try and keep that ball. He does. Over to Suchek. Now over to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek now. To Saar. To Erzi. Erzi's going to run down the wing. And hopefully no one can, in fact, keep up with him. Erzi, can he score? He can! And Erzi said that he can fill the spot of Felipe Anderson. And he's actually scored what could, could, emphasis on could, be the winning goal of the game. I've given him my trust and he has repaid me with a really nice finish into the bottom right corner and that was yet again guys another killer counter attack from us. Buries it into the right corner against Edison and that is very decent. We will take that all day and hopefully we can try and hold on. We have defended quite well so far so hopefully we can continue that on and maybe give some debuts to our new players. Over to Aguero. Aguero's playing. Didn't realise. Aguero's through and Aguero scores. And he's come on. Made an instant impact. And that is a little bit irritating. Um, did not think that was going to happen from Aguero. And um, yeah, he has actually put the ball in at the back of the net and scored. So um, yeah, not great. But we have scored two, so maybe we can score three. Actually going to have to make some changes. Don't want my team to be two ties. I'm actually going to give a debut to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I think I'm going to maybe bring on Boga as well, although Erzy's in form, so I'm thinking I might actually keep Erzy on. Wilshire, I'm thinking of sticking on over Suchek, and um, yeah, those are the changes that I'm going to make, guys. Hopefully they pay off against the City team. We'll see how Calvert-Lewin does, making his debut for us. We've got the ball. Over to Loftus-Cheek. Over to Saar. Saar's winning through. City now, wait, what are they, what's going on? Saar to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin scores in the 90th minute. What the hell was going on there? City just, City just slowed down. <laughs> um, okay, guys, I don't know what, they're jogging. What is going on there? I mean, I'll take it, I guess. What, that was very weird. I don't know what's happen there but we have scored the winner in the 90th minute and yeah guys we're, we're winning and I guess that could be it do City have any time to do anything I'm not sure we need to just close them down it's the fifth minute and that's it guys the comeback was on against Man City well to be fair we actually did I think 
just go level, but we scored the winner late on. Calvert-Lewin, City's defence just slowed down. They weren't even running back, but either way, I guess I'll take it, guys. That's some very weird, very controversial means going on there to how we won that game. Antonio gets a goal, and um, yeah, not too sure what happened there. Is that some sort of bug or something? I don't even know. But um, either way, Antonio just froze there. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, we can we go through in the cup against this City side. Strange means indeed, but I guess we'll take it. Alright guys, so still trying to get over what really happened in that game. But anyway, our financial report looking pretty good. We have reached the long-term goal within two seasons. So um, now, yeah, that's pretty good already to have completed that. Going to player chat, Fredericks said he was happy for the playing time. Yeah, still not sure what happened in that City game a bit. Controversial. I kind of wish that now, I don't know, we're just going to have to prove in the next round that we can just win without whatever that weird glitch was. But I guess we'll soon find out what our next game is and hopefully that doesn't repeat itself. That was really weird. I haven't seen that before. Okay, so we do have a transfer offer now for Balbuena. Now, I am sort of thinking, I think he's our fourth choice centre back. So if we need to rotate, he can prove useful however we do have Cresswell who can play centre back if needed also maybe we could look at potentially loaning in or buying a cheap centre back that could improve because I mean Balboin at 29 isn't going to get any better and I don't really use him and he's also a player that's probably going to want to play so could cause some issues if I'm not playing him I don't know whether I should just wait however until um, oh, don't know what I've done there um, until this summer, but then like Yarmolenko, will his price just go down loads? I don't know, I'll, I'll try and negotiate and um, try and get a higher price for him, and then if Leicester don't accept it, that is um, fine by me. They are rivals, but Balbuena's not really that big an asset for me to be that worried about selling, to be honest, so I guess we'll see. With Rogers um, in the office, they want 6.5 million. Maybe I can have a look at a player swap. Who do they actually... Um, have, which is interesting, they have Iheanacho and Loren, whoever that is. Who are their centre-backs? They have Chimulera, who's worth a lot. And um, yeah, they have Nastasic, who's decent. They have Wes Morgan, which is interesting. If you have a look at full-backs, who do they have? They have Luke Shaw, they have James Justin. Um, hmm, James Justin actually wouldn't be that bad an option to bring in if we could. Uh, midfielders and D-Deem has definitely we're getting any of those guys for everything. Um, you know what, I'm just going to ask for propose a new transfer fee. They said that I could buff up to 7.8 million, so that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer 7.8 million. Will they take it? There you go. They'll, they'll accept it. That was a higher price. 7.8 million. Maybe we're going to have to try and look for a new centre-back, but we shall see. Well, we'll wait until deadline day anyway, which actually isn't too soon. As you guys can see already, we do have Manchester City next in the league. Hopefully no more of that weird glitch that seemed to have happened. All right, Balbuena has been sold. So if we go to our office, we have 16 million in the bank. Now, it is transfer deadline day, and I was actually looking for a new goalkeeper, which, don't get me wrong, Fabianski is great, but I was thinking about getting a new keeper now. These are the three that I've sort of looked at. They're all young. They have decent potentials, mainly from the Italian league, it seems. Um, not too sure which one I'd want. There is a release clause there, 24 0.7 million. Now we don't actually have that much. I was thinking that hopefully I could get some of these around 10 million. Now I am thinking of maybe just making offers for all of them, but we will wait until after the game. Maybe they'll give us an update after that. I have Tenali here, but don't think I'm going to be offering for him anytime soon, unless maybe one of our players wants to leave. So without further ado, we will get into this game against Man City in the league, probably against a slightly stronger team, although their team was quite strong already, so maybe we can try and get off some of the momentum from the last game and um, maybe nick a result against them in the league as well. Now, 
They did, I believe, beat us something like 5-1 in the league, and we are actually going to be giving a first start to Calvert-Lewin. I don't want to like shaft off Antonio, but Calvert-Lewin did score the winning goal, so I think he deserves a start. Bruma, or oh, sorry, not Bruma, Boga, thinking of different Chelsea players there. Boga is not going to start yet. Um, Erzi did score in the game against City, so I think he deserves to start again as long as he keeps performing. Other than that, it's a pretty standard team. The Manchester City team looks very similar as well. It's basically the same apart from Aguero and oh, Pereira as well is starting. So is that the Pereira from Leicester? I assume so. But um, yeah, let's get into this game and hope... Okay, game against Manchester City. Let's go see what we can do. Right, what's... What is going on? This is... <laughs> what is going on? Guys, this has happened again. This is from the start of the match. What is... Right, okay, wait a minute. What the hell... What the hell's happening? Let me just go into the settings. Is something messed up here or no? 50, 50. Wait, there's nothing else, is there, that could be... I am so confused. You know you know what? I think... Maybe if I turn off the game... I'll be, I'll be back in a sec, guys. Is there a way to restart it? You can restart the match. Um, yeah, let's see what happens if I do that. Restart match. Could that... Do something, please, I pray. I don't really want to turn it off because I don't know how much it's saved because I haven't saved it recently. So, let's see, okay, you... All right, they're moving a bit quicker. Are they actually going to move? They're dribbling. They're still sort of standing still. Okay, I think this looks a bit better. I'm not too sure. This. Yeah, okay, they're not just standing still. All right, I think it's fixed, guys. I'll get back to you. If it's not, I'll have to restart the game. But, um, yeah, we're glitched. Don't know what's going on. They're offside. Yeah, I'll get back to you with the highlights. Okay, yeah, they're, they're running towards me now with the ball. I think this is definitely all right. Now, Saar, Calvert-Lewin's getting a go on the ball. What is this? There's, there's just a gap in their defence. Erzi is through. Is Erzi going to score against City again? He does. What the hell is going on? What was that gap in defence? I have no clue. I hate that celebration, by the way. I don't know why I keep doing that. But there was a big gap in the City defence. And what is it with us and early goals? We seem to be scoring... Really early on in the field, they're all all the defenders are moving right. They're not leaving us there like they did last time. So I'm gonna just put that down to bad defending from City. Um, yeah, Erzy with a nice left footed finish into the bottom right corner. That is one nil. Boy, now he's gonna probably try and find the pass. He does. We luckily block the shot from Sterling, and that was still can't get over what the hell that glitch was. While they all just started moving so slowly, basically gifted us the cup win. Good block from Kavak though, but either way, it seems to be fixed now, so we'll at least deal with that as and when it comes. Hopefully never again. That was to Fredericks, who has actually really found some form lately, and he does a little roulette there to um, continue his form. Fredericks is now going to hit through his Mayla Saar, who's now through one-on-one. -on -one. Do I try and shoot here? I think I do. His Mayla Saar shoots. He hits the post, but it rebounds straight back to him, and if that's not the definition of luck, I have no clue what is, but it's made us so I'm going to run to the camera because we may as well do it if that's what the CPU like to do. Hits the badge and that is 2-0. Classic counter-attacking goal. Man City were all over us since the last goal, but we did manage to find the counter-attack. Very fortunate though, he shoots. Not the great finish, hits the post, but it does fall straight back to him and that is going to be 2-0. Our away form, as I've said guys, is actually a lot better than our home form, so maybe that can attest to it. I don't know if it's the pressure or how it works, you'd think it'd be the other way around if anything, but our waveform seems to continue, and that's seven goals in the Premier League for Ismail Assar, not too bad for a winger indeed. Guess who's got the ball, he's going to pass that inside, what a pass that was, was that on side, Aguero now, hits it through, and oh my god, how did Sterling not get there, I have no clue, Saar though, over to Loftus-Cheek, Loftus-Cheek needs to try and control the ball, he does, gets it through to Rice, Rice, over to Calvert-Lewin, Calvert-Lewin now, Suchek's through, Suchek through to Erzy, Erzy, over to Suchek, Suchek over to Calvert-Lewin, Calvert-Lewin makes it 3-0, what a counter-attacking move that was, that was absolutely amazing, Calvert-Lewin over, right in front of the City fans, I think that is, who are not looking very happy, what a count, that might be my favourite counter-attack so far this season guys, the fluid passes Erzy to Suchek, Suchek just taps it through, Calvert-Lewin, and that is Calvert-Lewin's first Premier League goal for us. He scored the third against City in the Cup under, albeit slightly controversial means. Nothing controversial about this, though. 3-0 up against City at half-time. That 
is very strange. This is definitely the opposite to how our other league game against them went. Two goals in the Premier League. Are you telling me that Calvert-Lewin has only scored once for Everton? Wow, he was really out of favour there. So I guess us transferring him in isn't that unrealistic at all, him wanting to leave. Um, definitely very different to how he's doing in real life. But um, yeah, that is 3-0 at half-time. And um, you know what, guys? I did not expect this. I expected maybe a draw. Maybe we'd be down even 1-0. Thought City would be looking for some revenge, but 3-0 against City, this is crazy. Cavalier must have got some assists as well, so great showing from him. And um, yeah, let's see how this goes in the second half. We can't rule out a comeback from City, but hopefully we can at least hold on. A clean sheet would be massive. De Bruyne now. Oh my God, what was that? De Bruyne. <laughs> oh my God, a goal from De Bruyne. He like he scooped it over me. I'm not sure if that fully worked, but either way, he got past me. You see that he like scooped the ball. That was, I mean, I've never seen the computer do that before. Fair play, I guess. I want to see the replay of that, actually. What even was that? He got the ball here. Oh, that was stupid of me to slide in. Look at that. He does the little scoop. Scoops it over me. And, um, yeah, he completely, absolutely ruins Fredericks there. And, um, yeah, fair play, City. 3-1. Not game not over yet. Alright guys, apologies if towards the end of the game there, there was a little bit of a lag. I'm not too sure. I think what basically happens is I've sometimes occasionally forgot to plug in my charger to my laptop and when it runs a bit low on battery, um, it goes a little bit glitchy with the Elgato software. So, so I think it only started at about the fourth goal when I looked back. So um, yeah, it was actually a good goal from Boga, really helped out by Urzi who played very well this game. Um, so yeah, sorry if you guys didn't hear the, my latter commentary on that. But um, yeah, a massive win against Man City. Don't know how we won 4-1. I mean, really the contrast between the first time we faced them in the league this season and this time. Showing the progression of the team, showing the new signings as well. Really think the counter-attack is working really greatly for us against these possession-based teams at the moment. But um, yeah, luckily there was no um, weird controversial glitch or whatever it seems so um we actually did beat them fair and square this time and um yeah hopefully we can take that onto the rest of the league and that win should prove vital in our bid to finish top half and um to maybe carry on some form going into the fa cup to try and get some europa league football even though um that seems very unlikely but our players are trying to pull through and drive us towards that so um, with that said let's try and get into our first game third game i should say Guys, transfer deadline day has reached us. We will be doing this, getting into our final game of the episode. Bogue scores in West Ham's 4-1 win over Man City. That is absolutely mental. If we go and actually look at the um, top deals for the moment, Pereira, 74 million to City. Well, I tell you what, that did not seem to pay off for them. Valverde to PSG, massive. Gomez to Inter Milan. What a crazy deal that is. Aubameyang to Real Madrid. Oh, this is... um. Is this all deals? What is this from? Oh yeah, this is from um, just all over. Well, to be fair, we haven't really checked what happened all over. So Pereira, Richarlison, we saw that Pogba to Real Madrid. So we probably won't be coming up against these players unless we do get in the Champions League. Dinier to PSG kind of actually makes sense, I suppose, to be fair. Um, but yeah, looking at these deals, Odegaard to Juventus, forgot there, Piemonte Calcio. But um, yeah, some big deals going on in the league for some big money. Haller there for 50 million crazy um yeah Zakaria to Bayern so those are some of the big deals I think I am in fact going to attempt to get another goalkeeper although as you can see our first and second team we do seem to have one centre back probably shouldn't have sold Reeds maybe and just should have sold him or about Bayern but my main um, goal is to get a goalkeeper even though Fabianski has been good for us we may as well try and build a younger keeper now he may not be the highest overall so if we go over to the transfer hub. I might actually just simulate two hours to see if they get a bit more scouting information. I'm not sure if they do or not. But some um, deadline day will be interesting anyway. Bowen transfer offer for 24 million. Interesting. See, Bowen could grow it. I mean, I haven't really played Bowen that much. However, um, 
this also is higher, a lot higher than this value. I think we keep him for this window just because it is the um, transfer window and keep him in till the summer. I want you guys to let me know what you want me to do with Bowen as well because I know he's probably a big favourite for West Ham fans in real life. So um, I do want you guys to let me know what you want me to do with him, whether you want me to play him more or um, what you think the best thing to do about him is. Um, okay, we're going to go to transfers now for our goalkeepers. Now, I'm not too sure which one to really go with. 6-2, 6-4, Okay, well, I guess, in a sense, the 6-4 ones are sort of a bit more appealing. Not too sure what these traits actually are. Cautious with crosses. That's not great. Rushes out of goal. Saves with feet. Decent. Comes for crosses. So, I think maybe Lunin looks quite good. He is the youngest as well. But, I mean, it all depends whether we can actually afford these guys. His release clause is that. Maybe we could actually include Fabianski in a deal if it comes to it. But I don't know. I mean, I don't see why Real Madrid or Inter would really want him. I tell you what, I'm going to try for all three of these guys and see who I can get on the best deal. So, let's start with Lunin. And um, we could actually do an approach to loan and maybe buy at the end. But that just seems difficult. I'm just going to approach the straight up buy from Real Madrid. You can't be their main keeper, surely. So, you'd like to think that we can maybe buy him. Here we are with Zidane. Um, player swap. Could we actually offer a swap with Fabianski? Only 3 million. Shall we have a look and see what they do? Um, Fabianski and offer the transfer fee of... 10 million maybe, 10 million plus Fabianski, see what they do. How would you take Fabianski in 10 million? They want Lanzini and 6 million. That is very interesting. Because we don't necessarily need Lanzini, but then how am I for central midfield depth? Because we have Suchek, we have Gilmore... Um, we have Wilshire, we do have Wilshire and Gilmore, so um, that that is something. So I'd, maybe that's enough cover. I don't know. And so how how much would that be? That'd be about twenty three million in value. Hmm. And to be fair, we could maybe sign a centre back as well. But do we even need to sign a centre-back really yet? No, probably not. Um, I tell you what. Proposed new transfer fee. What about Lanzini? Three and a half million. Okay. They'll, they'll accept that. <laughs> they, they've accepted that. Okay, this is... Um, that's interesting. Um, if we go to our budget now, what does it say? We've still got our money, so do I still just make offers for the other goalkeepers anyway and just see what happens? Maybe I could just do that. Should we just do that? Let's, um, let's approach to buy from Sampdoria and see what sort of offers we get. Um, now, so I tell you what, how about this? We'll offer a player swap. We'll offer... Fabianski again, um, Lucas Fabianski will offer a transfer fee. Now they're maybe not as big a club, so if we offer nine million plus Fabianski and see what they say, they want thirty-four million and a sell-on clause. Um, yeah, no, sorry, screw that. Not doing, <laughs> not doing that. Um, yeah, so that offer's done. Let's let's try with. Um, Radu. He, to be fair, Odero might be their main goalkeeper, so that could make a bit of sense why they're trying to not sell him for so high. Um, but yeah, for him, let's go for a player swap. Let's go for Fabianski again and um, offer transfer fee. Let's go for 9 million again, I guess. Um, wait, advance. Fabianski, 9 million. Let's have a look, see what they say there. They want Bowen 1.4 million. Um, okay, well, like I said before, guys, I'm not too sure whether I'd want to sell Bowen or not. That would probably come to about the same sort of value in total as the Lanzini one. 
think I'd rather keep Bowen for now just because he is still young, he can still develop. So, um, probably going to, wait, if I counter, remove exchange player and just propose a transfer fee of 10 million and see what they say if I do that. What if you just take 10 million? How would you do that? 17 million. Right, we'd have no money if we did that though. And we would be able to keep Lanzini, which could still prove crucial, but we'd have Fabianski, we'd have three goalkeepers. Okay, you know what guys, I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to go with the other goalkeeper, I think. Um, and that will end up getting rid of Lanzini as well, who has been a bit of an issue for us. And for West Ham at the moment currently as well, someone actually did ask me to... Um, sell Lanzini um, a few episodes ago. They actually told me to sell Felipe Anderson or Lanzini. It looks like I'm selling them both. But we will negotiate with Lunion for a contract. I just think with Fabianski having six months, you don't want to be an issue where we actually can't find a goalkeeper. And um, it could be good to train him up now as we are in a restaurant rotation. That is absolutely fine. So if he's not that good, we don't actually have to start him every game. He wants four years. Um, I'm just going to counter and ask Four, five, just if you want that, that is absolutely fine. Music to my ears. Disregard the release clause. They did come from Spain, but they don't want it. I'm going to have to offer him money, <laughs> which is interesting. I don't know what his wage is. Um, I mean, I do have wage budget to spare. If I go for 25, that that could be too much, to be honest. 25 and 200,000. See what they say. At least maybe they'll counter it if they want it. They want 28 thousands you know what if i just remove the appearances bonus and submit the offer they might bump it up a bit they want thirty-two thousand. that is absolutely fine by me and just like that guys you've actually sorted out a new goalkeeper um we can actually go and check how much or how high he is in fact rated um if we go and look at the team i don't have a goalkeeper on the bench oh there he is he's 76 rated um, not too bad, pretty standard stats, he is unhappy with Malpo because he's not playing. We are going to put someone else on the bench, we'll put Bowen back on the bench where he belongs. Uh, maybe a bit harsh there for me. It's going to be the end of the transfer window for us. And um, mm. we've got a youth report, Masuaku transfer offer for 15.5 million, that's not actually that bad. And the thing is, is we actually could potentially be looking to get another um, left back soon um, or at least next window however Masuaku out of him and Cresswell will probably be him that goes we'll just leave that for now and we'll probably get a decent offer for him in the summer if we do think of selling him so we'll just leave that probably should just reject them but oh well we'll, we'll keep them waiting a bit why not um, yeah so I want to keep this team going for now through training and I'll be back with you when we go to the next game currently 11th place so we are making our way up the table Last game of the episode against Aston Villa at home. Um, we actually beat them away from home um, only a few episodes ago, I think. So it would be nice to get the double over them. As you can see, they've got Watkins on the wing, which is interesting. Barkley in the team as well. So it um, should be a decent game. Hopefully we can pick up the win. Calvert-Lewin, maybe he can get on the scoreboard again. We will have to see. But um, either way, Suchek's going to shoot and forces a big save. Was getting closed down quickly, so I thought I'd have to take the shot early. Martinez making some good over to Rice. Rice going to hit the ball through. Over to Suchek, not great. Good block from Gilbert. Um, Vujic through, can we make the tackle? Rice tries to do, but a bit too slow. Masuaku now going to try and close down. And now we've got Wesley with the ball. He's got a bit of the power. Through ball to Ross Barkley. And Ross Barkley punishes us with the goal. We are 1-0 down. Oh, what is he doing? Is he running to his manager? Haven't seen this in a few episodes. But um, you'd love to see it. really do like the Aston Villa away kits, to be fair. I like the very faint lines going down. But I don't like how Ross Barkley has scored against us. Not very um, not very loyal, are you, Ross? But um, still, yeah, that was a good finish from him. Fabianski in the net could not do a thing. And uh, Ross Barkley is gassed. Villa are 1-0 up. Um, that was a poor throw though from him he definitely does not know what to do with them but they have made Barkley's made a very good tackle and maybe it's actually Barkley who's been the player for Villa so far very good from him 
And now Barkley's through again. Barkley tries to make the cross. What a goal from Wesley with the scissor kick. That was a very powerful cross from Barkley. And then Wesley, a man who don't, you don't really see anymore, play for um, Villa, gets the goal. And this is really a tale of two halves in this episode, isn't it, guys? Beating City twice, losing 2-0 to Villa. The comeback still could be happening, but... Um, yeah, they focus on Fabianski retiring, and maybe this is why, as that was not great from him. Outside of the boot, that was crazy good from Wesley, to be fair. You can't really complain when a goal that good is scored against you. Five goals in the league for him. I'm not going to argue. Erzy over now, through to Calvert-Lewin, who's now going to try and do something. Go over to Suchek. Suchek going to try and break through. He actually does. Suchek scores, and that could be the goal that is needed for our comeback to happen. Got a bit lucky there, did Suchek. Just barged through. And um, he's going to pick up the ball as we do need to run back. But he is happy. Fair enough from him. Um, and yeah, decent. Maybe another assist for Calvert-Lewin. Although he did get tackled. So maybe that assist will not count. But either way, Calvert-Lewin has been key in the build-up play. And Suchek has delivered a goal that could signal a comeback. So um, probably not going. nothing's going to happen until half-time. But I might be on Boga soon, to be fair. Um, Rice now through to... Loftus Cheek, Calvert Lewin now over to Suchek. Suchek now over to Loftus Cheek, who's going to try and hit through. Calvert Lewin, who's going to hit it over to Erzy. Erzy's going to go through. He's just going to cross it into Suchek, who is tall but cannot do anything. Sar's now got the ball. Going to pass that over to Suchek. Over to his mate, Lassar. His mate, Lassar. What a goal that is. Some brilliant play by Loftus Cheek. And his mate, Lassar, who I was actually thinking of bringing off, has scored the equaliser. We've done the terrible celebration again. Need to figure out what that one is so I do not do it. I believe that was originally created by Lacazette, but great pass there. Nice play. One touch football and a great goal by Ismail Assar. We are back in the game 2 2. With that said, I am going to actually make some subs because I do want to bring Boga on. Um, I think because Sar scored the goal, I'm actually going to take off. Uh, Z. We're going to see what Boga does. He's actually got a bit of a plus now because he is getting brought on. I think that's the only change I'm going to make so far. Maybe wait 10 minutes or so before probably giving Antonio and someone else a run out. But um, I say a run out. I mean, we're still not winning the game. So we still need to do that. Um, so he's defending from Villa. I am going to pause it. I'm going to give Antonio a goal. He is still probably the top scorer in the league is Antonio, which is um, quite funny. Also... Trying to think on who else to bring on. Probably Wilshire. I know Gilmore does well when he comes on as well. I think I'm going to bring on Gilmore for Loftus Cheek. Maybe a bit more defensive that is as well. And then can also perform a decent pass too. Um, but we will need to get the ball out of play before we do that. Um, another ball through to Wesley. Just seems to be working very well for them. Traore now over. Diop keeps that though very nicely. And now over to Boga. Boga with the nice pass. Suchek's going to go through. And he's going to make the run. Over to Calvert-Lewin. Who's through? Calvert-Lewin shoots. Calvert-Lewin makes it 3-2. And is that the comeback, guys? 2-0 down. 3-2 against Aston Villa. What an episode this has been, honestly, guys. Three wins, potentially, in a row. Comebacks involved. Interesting glitches involved. Thrashings involved. This has been quite the episode. Slots it in nicely for Martinez. That'll be the final thing that Calvert-Lewin does before he does come off for Antonio. Nice goal from him. That is going to be his third goal in the Premier League. And he's also going to come off for Antonio, who still has his place in the team as well. Maybe he can try and nick a goal in the last 10 minutes, or at least use his work rate to allow us to keep hold of the lead here. Um, but either way, Barkley's got the ball over to Wesley. They are playing some decent football here. Through to De La Cruz. And that is decent. And that is a shot. And... That is um, very disappointing, guys. That is poor from Fabianski there. You can't be allowing that to happen. And um, they've only got a point, so I don't know what they're doing again. The second time they've gone around to their manager. Maybe they just love Dean Smith, you know. Maybe he's a great guy. But, um, yeah, that's very disappointing. The space was left to them. But, um, yeah, decent goal. But just the near post keepers, guys, honestly, just really should be doing a bit better there. Um, yeah, that is a little bit disappointing, unfortunately. Um, and Rice, Rice through to Suchek. Masiwaku now over to Boga, who's going to try and hit that back as well. Three minutes of added time, so we need to try and do something at least. Antonio now over to Billy Gilmore. Billy Gilmore now going to cut 
inside, cross it in to Antonio. Antonio! Antonio, he cannot be forgotten. Antonio has scored the fourth goal straight from the kickoff. Gilmore playing a vital part in that, so maybe I spoke too soon about my transfers, or not transfers, my um, substitutions not paying off. Gilmore cuts inside, nice little ball across, just hits it lightly. The power from Antonio, maybe Martinez should have done better as well. It wasn't too far away from him, but he was heading the other direction and wasn't quick enough to react to the header from Antonio. And Antonio, you know, Calvert-Lewin might have come in, but he is still going to fight for his place in this team. He's still going to fight for West Ham, the team he's been with forever. And that is going to be his 24th goal in the Premier League. And the fans are buzzing, they are jumping around. And God, guys, like I said, what an episode this has been. Probably the best episode of the career mode so far. That is it. Pretty much one of the last touches of the game. We have won 4-3 at home against Aston Villa. Scoring more goals they did against us than Man City managed to do. But, um, yeah, what a game, guys. If you guys did enjoy this episode, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below what more you want to see we're really starting to improve and find our groove in this series so i hope you guys are enjoying it as well be sure to subscribe for more daily episodes of this series as well as fantasy premier league and other football related videos so many scorers in that game i do hope you guys have a nice day and i'll see you next time